Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the lane graph uh, config uh, property with the thread ID in order to uh, remember and uh, conserve the conversation between the AI agent and the human, right? So here we have a drop down. Select the previous conversation. We have no conversation thread. I'm going to start a new conversation. Hi, I'm Adam. Submit. And let's prove that we can, uh, that the memory of the conversation is being saved by asking the agent, what is my name? Your name is Adam. And as, as soon as I started this conversation, a new conversation thread has been added to the dropdown. Right? Now I'm going to refresh. I can see this conversation thread. I can go back to it. And I can, oops, what is my name? I can go back to it and I'll see my name. It remembers it's Adam. Or I can add another button, new conversation. Or I can just refresh the app instead of that button that I didn't add. And I don't choose a conversation. I'll say, what is my name? I'm sorry, I don't have access. So we'll start a new thread. This one is 653. The new one we just started, we'll say, I'm actually, I don't know, Tom. My name is Tom. Submit. And now if I ask it, what's my name, it's going to say, you mentioned sure his name is Tom. So I have two separate conversation. Here I'm Tom, and here I'm Adam, right? And what's so cool about this is that it remembers this conversation, right? It remembers everything that I write down because I'm storing everything inside the client's browser, right? On the browser, I'm sorry, not an external database, but on the browser using the dash DCC store. I'm, th I'm storing all the threads in the data property of this store. And I'm, throwing, I'm storing the single thread, one conversation at a time, in this. So let me explain how this goes. Um, this uh, is, is uh, something that it, the code of this video is going to be on Charming Data, charming-data.com. Come join us. It's free. It's open. And, um, and we typically meet on every Saturday. Uh, virtually to discuss these kind of projects and other projects that have AI, Plotly, and Dash. In fact, next week I'm going to do a video which is much more sophisticated than this uh, using my colleagues, uh, Charming Data Community member, uh, code and app where you can recap the conversation, you can delete a conversation, and so on and so on. All right, so let's see how this is done. I'm doing all of this with two different callbacks. This callback here and this callback here. So let's look at the first callback. Let's let's delete everything. Let's do Control C. Uh, let me actually close the tab. I want to close this tab and open a new one. And with a new tab, you'll see everything is deleted. Why? Because all threads, where I, the list of all the thread IDs, it's in the session storage type. So I'm, it deletes from the browser once the tab is closed. If you want to maintain the information you can choose local storage right here local and it will and the only way to delete the local storage is through de deleting the browser cookies now this is a simplified version it's a tutorial i'm saving all the thread ids of the ai agent the langrafts agent conversation i'm saving them on the client's browser right but if you really want to be sophisticated and professional you should probably save these thread ids in an external database, not in a browser, because if the person del del closes the tab or deletes their cookies, all the conversations are erased. You want to save this information on MongoDB or an ex any external database um, because then it will last forever, right? You have control over the, that saved data. But this is for tutorial purposes. So let's see how we do this with this code. The first callback, what I'm doing is as soon as I uh, load the app for the first time, I'm the user of the app. I see that I'm taking the conversation thread, which is the data property of this DCC store. It's invisible in the layout, but I'm taking that data. And I'm saying I'm also taking the data of all the threads. So I have one thread ID, like the current conversation, and all the threads of all the conversation. This one and this one. And I'm saying if all the threads is none, 
And it's going to be none the first time, because the first time there's nothing, the data here is none. If the data property of all the thread is none, then just create an empty list, right? I just need an, an initial empty list of all threads. You can print the list and you see it's an empty list. And then I'm gonna say, if the conversation thread, only one conversation, is uh, not none and not inside this list, then append to this list the current conversation thread. Well, right now the conversation thread, one single conversation is none. It's not not none, it is none because I haven't started a conversation. You see with this callback down here, once I start a conversation, uh, I'll return the thread ID to the data property of the DCC store, right? So only after I start a conversation will I actually have uh, a thread ID. So I start a conversation. Hi, I'm Joe. Submit. Now you see I start a conversation. I'll go, we'll go over this callback later, but the conversation is started. I re, we created a, um, I think right here. Yeah, right here, conversation thread is none. We created a uh, random ID for the conversation thread. And then we are returning this conversation thread after the response of the agent to the data property of this store component of the conversation thread. So let's take the same store component now that we have it in the browser right here. Let's take the same store component. And now if conversation thread is not none, it's not none, it's actually a number, it's 677. And it's not in all threads because all threads is an empty list, then append this to the empty list. So now this will be a list of one item 677. All right. Same thing if I say, if I'll start a new conversation, hi, I'm Adam, submit. Now I'll have two numbers, two conversation IDs, and these two numbers are going to be inside this, this list, right? So we'll have all threads right now with two conversations, 677 and 335 right here. And I'm gonna return this to two separate properties. We're gonna return it to the data of all threads. So it's gonna be right here, the data property of all threads. So this list is going to be stored on the browser. And I'm also going to return it, this is something cool, to the options property of my dropdown. So now a user can look at all the threads and pick one of the threads from the dropdown, right? Cool. So that's the first callback. The second callback is a little bit more complicated. So if you do have questions, please ask them in the comment section of the YouTube video, or even better, go to charming-data.com and just message me there. I'm a lot more uh, responsive and available. Some of these videos after like a year or two years, is, it's harder to keep track of. Okay, so here, I'm going to have two outputs that I'm going to return objects to, right? The first output is going to be the children of this. This is a markdown. This search area, if you'll go all the way up to uh, line 78, search area, this is just markdown, right? Where the response goes. So I'm going to return, if we go back here, the children of search area on line 138. I'm going to activate the agent after I click on the button and I'm going to return the content, the response, right? This is the response right here. And I'm also going to return to, like we said before, two minutes ago, to the data property, the conversation ID, all right? And this is just uh, this is just the activating the agent. I talked about it like two videos ago. We have our, uh, this is underscore, this represents our end clicks, our button. So as soon as we have information here, uh, where is Paris? and I click the button, it's going to submit that question. It will re read it from the user input, the value of the user text field. We're gonna read this into right here, the agent, and the agent is gonna give us a response through the markdown, All right? Paris is the capital of France, blah, 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 blah. All right, beyond the two outputs, we also have five different inputs. One is the input, that activates the callback and the other input states are just 
you were just listening to the data, but they don't activate the callback. The only time the callback will function will be executed is when the button is clicked, this input. But what are these four different things? Well, this is the value of the dropdown. I want to see if there's a value chosen, like a thread ID. This is a user text, right? The, the, the question or the information the user gives us. The data of all the conversation threads, which is pretty much like this. And also, um, sorry, the data of, of, one, of the one conversation thread and data of all conversation threads. Okay, just like we saw up here. So what I'm saying is, this is the logic. If the conversation thread is none, the conversation thread, remember, is stored in the browser right here in the DCC store. And it's of type memory, meaning that when the data deletes from the browser, when the, the table, the tab is refreshed. That's how I chose to do it. So as soon as I refresh the tab, now this is going to be none, the conversation thread. All threads still exist, but one conversation thread is none, right? So because there's no conversation thread, I'm going to check. If the dropdown value is none, like right here, then create a random number from 1 to 1,000 and add this random number as the thread ID of this config. So later when I ask the question, well, where is uh, London, whatever, now this question and this config is going to be a new random thread, right? Let me ask this question. It's just going to be a new number, 916, which also returns from this callback, returns to the dropdown. Remember this right here, 916. So this is this is how we add to the conversation thread if the dropdown is, is none. But if there is something in the dropdown, if it's not none, then the, the thread ID is going to be the dropdown value. If I'm going to go back to a previous conversation, I don't know, 355, then this is going to be the, the, the config. So when I add the config here, Langgraph will know the agent that we're referring to a different conversation. What is my name? I can't remember if this was Joe or Adam. Adam. Okay. Now, if the conversation thread is not none, if it's still right now, it's not none. There is a conversation thread stored in the in the browser. We haven't refreshed. We haven't closed the tab. If it's not none, then um, then you check the drop down again. If uh, the drop down is chosen, then override. Then this will be the conversation ID. If the drop down is not chosen, which I think is not an option because you can't really delete it. So this is not really an option, but if you could delete the, the, the drop down, if clearable equals true, then then this would happen. And we would add the conversation ID to the config. All right. So I know I went over a lot. I know it's a bit complex, but what's really cool about this app is that it shows you how to use the config and the thread ID are, um, a key, dictionary key, to preserve and go back to previous lang graph um, uh, conversations or agent conversations. Now this is saved. This is uh, temporary memory that is saved in the browser. This is not saved. This information, the question, the answer, the whole conversation is not saved in the LangGraph database. It's probably saved in the cookies of the browser. So it's also temporary. So you're going to have to actually uh, look into uh, the LangGraph uh, memory, I used very up here on line 35, I use memory saver right here. Check pointer is memory saver. And I think this is temporary memory. You're going to have to use either the LangGraph cloud or, or external database to also save uh, the whole conversation, right? I'm just saving the thread ID that refers to the 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 number of the conversation right which which conversation it was but it doesn't save all the content of the conversation all the messages back and forth has to be saved somewhere now it's saved as temporary memory but uh you should probably save it in an external database or the LangGraph cloud um so you can you can access it um in the future right regardless of who uses your your app Okay, I hope you learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, 
what do they smash the like button they say often uh you don't have to smash it you can just click the mouse um you know so softly uh but as long as you click it that's good uh and uh yeah come join charming data talk to me there i'm, I'm always here to to help you grow and learn all right uh always remember we're better together so help each other out <laughs>